Hey friends and neighbors, this is Robert at Day Bear Daisy Aries. I am out here in the middle of the day, which is somewhat unusual for me. I normally spend the heat of the day inside, but today is really, really hot. And so I am out here and I am misting and watering everything for a second time today just to keep things cool. The birds inside the buildings have fans and misters. So you can see way back there is Fluffy, one of the Moluccan cockatoos, and on the bottom of his cage, of his aviary, I have temporarily put in my, I have 11 left. I bought 12. You remember seeing those videos. We did lose one early on, but I have 11 of these English variety the cuckoo marins. I say they're the English variety. They're they're hatchery quality. They came from Cacker, Cackle Hatchery. I'm extremely pleased with them, but I say that they're the English variety as opposed to a French variety because they do not have feathers on their feet. You can see that the bottom of their pen is muddy. I just changed out their the water in their dish. I may, I think I'm going to take that water dish out and take it in and scrub it real quick. I'm sitting right here next to Oscar's cage. He, you know, he is our, our clothing optional sulfur crested cockatoo. But I wanted to take this, this opportunity and take this video that other than a few roosters and the Patagonian conyers, most of the birds are extremely quiet during the middle of the day. They get noisy for a little bit in the morning and then for about an hour in the evening right before the sun goes down. But once the sun goes down, they're all quiet. I think the Patagonians are only, only calling out right now because Daniel is in their aviary giving them some fresh food right now. But Oscar and I just wanted to say hi. This is one of the golden cuckoo marins roosters that we have we have two of them now they came from these are the culprits for most of the crowing that you heard earlier these came from Myers hatchery only got one one hen in the group when i ordered these and she's currently free ranging you can see behind is the big Conyer aviary. Once I get the ends of those, that building closed off, I'm going to put all of the Cuckoo Marins in there together. But for now, I have the two roosters separated. They have always been together. They grew up together, so they're, they, they cohabitate nicely together. And they actually live on the bottom of Doodle's aviary. He is our male military macaw he actually has a, a a wife a girlfriend living in north alabama that will be coming to live here very soon doodles had the unfortunate accident when he was just hatching now he was raised by some friends who are who have retired from breeding birds uh, uh, an older couple lovely couple that live in northern jefferson county uh, they live about an hour and a half away but doodles is two years old he was hatched by a pair of military macaws who were very keen on helping the baby hatch out of the egg and in so doing they they, they bit off part of his beak now, Doodles eats just fine. He, he eats pellets, and he eats lots of soft foods. He eats fruits and vegetables, and he's even able to crack some seeds. We do have to crack open walnuts if we ever give those to him, though. Now, the female that we have reserved for him is just absolutely perfect condition. She's about the same age, and she's going to come live here soon, and there'll be a slow introduction and we're going to work on building them an even larger aviary, one of which they can actually fly. Military macaws are an endangered species, and 
Unfortunately, our United States federal government has what they have, what's called the Endangered Species Act, the ESA, and it was, it's, in, it's enforced by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. It was originally enacted to help preserve native species and help to protect endangered native species which is an absolutely wonderful thing. Things like the American bald eagle and the California condor and the Florida panther and the American alligator, those have all been saved partly, slightly, through the help of the Endangered Species Act. Absolutely wonderful things that those animals have been saved. Unfortunately, what that does is it limits the, the, the trade in the species that are listed on that Endangered Species Act, it limits the trade across state lines so that you actually have to have a federal permit that is currently almost impossible to get to transport these birds across state lines from one state to another. And so what that means in theory is it's supposed to help protect the birds. I don't understand how. No one has ever been able to explain that to me. What it does practically, though, it means that I cannot go to Georgia and buy a female military macaw for him. I can't contact any of my numerous friends in California or Texas or Florida and have a military macaw shipped here. Now, Doodles was born in captivity. Obviously, almost every bird here was, with the exception, we think, of Fluffy, the big mullock, and Cockatoo. All the others here were, were born in captivity. Doodles was born here in Alabama. The female military macaw that we have found to go with Doodles is a beautiful little girl named Ingrid. She currently lives with a friend up in North Alabama, but she was actually born very near to Auburn University down in the southeast corner of Alabama. You can see Doodles, he climbs around just fine. He's actually even able to fly in this cage. I'm gonna work this afternoon to replace his perches. I guess he doesn't want to be a movie star anymore. He's walked to West Summer. Anyhow, I just wanted to mention the ESA and the, the ridiculousness that it has caused for a lot of agriculturalists trying to to propagate these birds in captivity privately to help save them from extinction. And now I'd just like to thank you for watching and wish you the a wonderful day, and God bless you, and bye-bye.